Moin Moin and welcome to Ralph's Photo Booth. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed your first flights with the uh, DJI Phantom 2 Vision uh, and you have no flyaways. In my last videos I explained how to start, how to make the first start, uh, which things are to obey when you make the first start um, and I showed you how to remove the fish eye effect with the uh, software Prodrenaline. Um, so I hope you enjoyed your first flights, your first videos and photos um, and so today I want you to show the um, different settings of the DJI Vision app. So there are different settings for photography, for video, um, you have different options which you can choose from and that's my topic for today. Um, I use an iPad and um, a special holder for my iPad and the uh, remote control um, because I like it when I, when I have the opportunity that the iPad is a little bit higher so I can have, a, uh, um, have the, the first person view um, a little bit higher so I can follow the DJI, the vision and have the first person view in my side so that's the reason why I like this. Um, and uh, use the iPad. The iPhone is mere, is is um, is too small um, because I uh, wear glasses and it's a little bit difficult to change between the far side of the vision and the very small display of an iPhone. So that's the reason why I use uh, an iPad. Yes. Yeah, so first of all, you have to start both the uh, Wi-Fi repeater and the vision and then let's go to the functions here. First of all um, you have to go to your Wi-Fi menu and in the Wi-Fi menu you will find the uh, Phantom and that's the one you have to choose from. Okay here is Phantom then we go to the DJI app, DJI Vision, here we are and when the uh, uh, app starts you have here on top you have the name phantom and the number and the green light that says okay you are connected so let's start with the news here in the news section you get news from dgi um, you can only get news if you are connected to the internet now we are connected to the uh, vision so that's the reason why i don't get any news from uh, dgi here next point is the settings and in the settings we have the camera setting starts with the toolbar auto hide so if you says yes the toolbar on the on the side and on the bottom will, will auto hide um, otherwise i want to see it all the time so that's the reason why i use this one when connection breaks so if you have a fly away or if you fly too far you can say up, um, whether the recording should stop or if the recording should start so when you don't have a recording um, you can start the recording start continuous capture or stay in idle and that's the thing I choose because um, when uh, the connection is lost I want that the camera makes exactly the same what it uh, uh, does before the break so if I have a recording it should go on and record if not doesn't matter next point here is the flight controller here in the flight controller you can change between imperial and metric so feet and uh, uh, metric next point is a general auto flip you can says if the picture should flip uh, low battery warning um, if i would suggest to put the low battery warning to on because then you will see when the battery gets low you get a red light and you get a really nice sound it's loud and so you um, won't forget to land the uh, vision then you can start a tutorial i don't know um, doesn't need the tutorial you can uh, clear the uh, news cage um, next point is the binding the binding is between the um, wi-fi repeater and the camera of the vision um, usually the binding when you get the the, the vision the binding um, is set from the factory but it can happen that you lose the binding and it can happen that you press uh, accidentally the reset button of the um, of the wi-fi repeater and then the binding is gone and then you have to make the binding again um, you have here a field which says scan the qr code 
uh, on your vision camera on the back side there should be a small label um, this is the QR code and this label you should scan and um, then you can bind the Wi-Fi repeater with the uh, camera of the vision okay so next point find my phantom yeah if you if you lose your phantom um, and she's still on and she has um, the uh, GPS signal um, and it's not too far away you can uh, choose where it uh, can uh, can look where your uh, vision is where it is in the forest or in the field or anyway if you if you fly in the summer over a cornfield that's really nice to see where your vision is when you get lost. Next point is um, your account. There you can set the vision or the DGI account rate and about. So these are the settings. Next point is the album. And here in the album you will see um, the pictures you have taken and you can see the videos. That I want to show you later when we um, took some pictures and a small video. Most important point, sure, that's the camera. So press the camera signal symbol and here we are. Here is my live picture. Here we are. Here's my live picture. Um, on the bottom we have the distance. Okay, the distance. Uh, we have no distance, altitude and the speed. Here we have the small compass um, and you press the compass symbol. You get the radar. Uh, and in the radar you see in which direction the vision points or the camera points and you get this 300 meter circle. Um, uh, in the 300 meter circle usually you have connection between the remote control and the uh, first person view out of 300 meter it uh, can get a little bit problem. There are some possibilities to extend the uh, distance with Wi-Fi repeaters. I will show you in one of my next videos how you can extend the, uh, the Wi-Fi range and um, so you can fly a little bit further than the 300 meters. Okay, let's press it back and so here we have the screen. On the top we have the uh, Wi-Fi connection symbol, we have the uh, battery charge uh, status uh, 82%, we have uh, the sign that there's an SD card in and we have the satellite, the, the amount of uh, satellites of the GPS signal we have. Okay for sure here in my office there are no um, no CPS signal so that's the reason why this is gray and then there under we have the um, amount of pictures uh, you can take. Here is the toolbar height if you don't have the auto toolbar height you press this button and you see no toolbar and toolbar back. Here we have the uh, possibility to take pictures and start video press the um, photo button and you get a photo and then back again press the video button and here we are here is Ralph on the video <laughs> okay you see here the time second minute and hours hours I don't think you can fly hours but okay maybe with uh, some extra batteries so stop the video then we have the tilt function of the camera that's here down and up. If you go up be careful not to go too high because if you use propeller, um, uh, these propeller guards um, you will see them in the picture. You see here is the, here we are, here's the propeller guard. Um, and don't forget if you fly forward the vision makes a little bit a downwards um, uh, movement and you get the the prop guards um, uh, in the picture so um, remember this and have a look always on the screen to make a correction in this direction. Um, one thing I will show you a little bit later in one of my videos there is an option that you cannot only make the tilt with the um, with the iPad or the mobile device but there's also an option to um, say, make some modifications so that you can make the tilt function with a small lever uh, under your remote control or a, 
uh, button on top of your remote control. This one is the the um, the button where you can move the iPad and make the tilt function. I don't think that anyone uses this because um, um, it's not complicated, but I think it's useless because usually it's much easier to move the make the tilt function here. So okay, these are the main uh, informations you have on your screen. Now let's go to the settings. First of all, we have um, the amount of pictures you will take, single pictures, single picture, three pictures in a row, five pictures in a row, and you have the self-timer. The problem at the self-timer is you have only 30 seconds and um, then you can say how much pictures you want to take. If you make this symbol infinity, um, it goes and goes and goes every 30 seconds one picture. Or you can say I want to take like, I don't know, 30 pictures and then after uh, 15 minutes it's okay, you, you're gone. Uh, let's see maybe if I change from RAW to JPEG, maybe then I can change it. Give me a second. Yes, here we are. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you can change it, but you have to go to the JPEG format. I'm so sorry. In my German video I've missed this. I have to, to uh, change this part in my uh, German video. Um, yes, you can make the interval shorter than 30 seconds, but you have to go to the JPEG format. Back again to RAW and here we are. Yes, in RAW you have 30 seconds and in JPEG you can go down to 3 seconds. Okay, so good to know. Never use this function because usually I make videos or I make single pictures when I park the vision over my scene uh, and uh, direct it perfectly and then I make single pictures. I don't use the uh, interval timer. So, okay, but you have seen, you can change it, go to JPEG and then you have different options. Next one is the, uh, is the compression L, M and S. Uh, I would suggest to take large. Next point is the video option. Here you have 1080i with 60 frames per second, 1080p with 30 frames per second, 25 frames per second and the smaller resolution 960, 720 and the smallest 480. Um, the main question is what's the difference between 60i and 30p? Um, if you use 60i um, you have a, s a picture size of 920 by 1080, um, so almost 2 million uh, pixel. And if you use 60i, the camera makes 60 pictures in one second, but the first picture reads all the rows 1, 3, 4, 7 and so on. The next picture takes the rows 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and so on. So it swaps always between every picture, picture one this line, picture two this line. So if you take a, uh, a video um, of a fast moving object, you may have these, these uh, it, it f don't fit perfect to, um, um, and, it's, and then there are not perfect lines. So that may be the problem if you work with uh, 60i. If you use uh, 30p, you get 30 pictures in a second and every picture is a full frame picture. Every picture takes a 2 million pixels. So you don't have these, the, the, you have straight lines, but the problem may be um, that, that it's not perfectly continuous with uh, 30 pictures uh, per second. Uh, but honestly, I use the uh, 30p option because um, when I use the uh, 30p option, I can uh, change this in the post-production. I can go up to 60p um, and uh, if I have a good program like um, um, Premiere or um, uh, Final Cut, I can, I can resize or not resize, I can interlace the video so to, to get more than 30 frames per second. So I use the, the 30p option and on the other hand I don't fly very fast. I usually fly a little bit slower to make like slow-mos and um, therefore the, the, 
30p option is better than the 60i option. Here you have different picture sizes. Um, try, I would suggest to take the full size picture, so the, the uh, full 16 by 9 picture. So my suggestion 1080p, 30 frames per second, and the full size picture. Here, what I said before, we have the option between JPEG and RAW. Um, if you use um, JPEG, you can use the options here to make a serial of, uh, serial of three or five pictures. Let's see how this will work. Press the button and then we have three pictures. I will show you later in the, in the uh, album how it looks like. Oh, sorry. Um, if you make RAW, you only can make uh, one picture. So if you go back here, oops, sorry. If you go back to the setting and you are in the RAW mode, you only can make one picture. And that's very important to set this to one and to RAW because otherwise it. Um, I'm not quite sure. I tried it sometimes. I don't get the raw picture. I get the, the JPEG because I've missed to change to a single picture. So if you want to be very sure, um, go to a single picture and then set it to raw mode. Here you have the ISO setting, um, 100, 200, 400. When you shoot in, um, in the bright sunlight, go to a 100. Um, if you have a little bit less light, like on a cloudy day, you may set it to 200. And if you um, make pictures or videos in the uh, sunset, sunrise, I would suggest to make auto because um, then the camera makes the ISO setting by herself and uses the lowest possible setting for the best picture quality so you don't have to change it by yourself. Next point is white balance. Also here you have the auto white balance and I would suggest to use the auto white balance. Um, this one is for uh, bright sunlight, this one is for a cloudy day and this one is if you fly indoors and have artificial light. You see the, the, the color of my skin gets real blue um, and um, it's much better to work outside with the auto white balance. I always use the auto white balance and this works perfect for me. Next point is the uh, measure of the, uh, exp the exposure metering. You have the um, complete field, you have the center field, or you have the spot metering and you see if you use if I use the spot metering the camera tr uh, goes on my black shirt and tries to correct this one to a, a neutral gray um, so if you if you use the spot it can happen that you get a wrong exposure because um, because um, if you have a very bright or a very dark point in the middle, the camera tries to make the exposure on this point. So I would suggest to use the full frame for exposure measurement. Next point is the exposure correction. Yeah, when do you need exposure correction? Exposure correction do you need when you uh, shoot in low light situations because in low light situations the camera try to compensate the, the low light by herself so um, the, the atmosphere of, the, of a little bit darkness, a little bit low sun um, is not in the movie because the camera make a little bit more exposure to correct this um, and so you have to do it by yourself so if you go out and shoot in sunrise sunset or in, in other low light situations and you want to get the atmosphere in your video then you have to make an exposure correction a minus exposure correction um, so you see it gets a little bit uh, darker and so the atmosphere of the video is much better. Um, then you have to try a little bit which exposure correction fits perfect. Um, you have to make um, different settings um, to try and um, to get the experience um, what is best in which situation. Next point, oops, next point is the uh, picture setting standard hard or soft, I would suggest standard um, because this usually um, is perfect for the most of the, of the situations. Next point is the correction of the, uh, the flicker correction if you work uh, indoors. 
uh, and have different um, light um, um, uh, settings. You have to go to 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Um, you have to check it. You will see the flicker in the picture. So um, I would also suggest auto because usually um, you don't fly indoors. You'll usually fly outdoors. So an outdoors, that's not important which um, setting you have. Reset. Here you can set the uh, default settings of the uh, camera and here you have the option to format the SD card. Yes, so these are the most important settings. Um, yes, very good to know. I didn't remember this um, with the different setting here, RAW and JPEG. Um, but now you know it. You can set a small interval of three seconds and uh, infinity. So the camera makes every three seconds a picture um, till you land or till you stop this one. You can make these settings for sure each time you fly in the flight mode. You don't have to do it before. You can change the settings during the flight. That's absolutely no problem. Okay, so now let's go back to the um, album. Here we are and now we go to the album and there we see Yes, here we are um, and here you, you can, you have the three pictures, here you have the video, here you have the uh, raw format and here you can, if you press on the video, you can replay the video um, also on your tablet without removing the SD card from the camera. Okay, here we are with the video and if you want to, um, if you want to import a picture to your smartphone, iPhone or anything else, just press it and then here on the top of the camera you have the symbol to, uh, to transfer the picture to your smartphone. Just press it and here we are and now the picture is on the library, on the photo library of your smartphone. So that's very easy. So you can send the picture um, uh, in Facebook or Flickr or anything else. Also you can post the video. Um, if you transfer the video to your smartphone, it's the same option here. You can uh, post the video very fast um, in the different social media um, apps. Yeah, so these are the most important informations to the uh, DJI app for the Phantom 2 Vision. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed my video and I hope it helped a little bit to understand how the app works and which options do you have. Um, yeah, so if you like the video, please give me a like here, leave a comment, um, share the video. Um, and one thing, uh, usually you see the videos in Ralf's Photo Bude. Um, I have a second YouTube channel, Ralf's Photo Flug. Um, and there in this channel, I post all the DJI Vision videos and uh, some more videos of quadrocopters or multicopters. And um, there are some um, stuff to um, pimp up the Vision. Um, in the next few weeks I will post it in both channels, but after a while I think I will post it only in the Ralf's Fotoflug channel um, because um, I want to get the Photo Bude channel a little bit clear and um, want to reserve it for uh, photo cameras, digital cameras and stuff like this. Yeah, so thanks for watching me. Don't forget the like and um, till now have some nice flights. Don't have any flyaways or crashes. And till now I say bye bye and moin moin.